Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Buster's Taste Challenge. We have two single scotch whiskeys. This is the Glenlivet of Year Age, company founded 1824. And I put this was introduced in 1824. Wow. I don't know when exactly the 12 year hit the market, but the company's been around since 1824. Now it's the Chivas Brothers brand. 1824, George Smith uh, established his distillery in the remote and wild look of Glenlivet. All right, so, I mean, I guess it took a while to get the 12-year out, but uh, anyway, comes in this nice box. This is the old label. I found it at Walmart. They're all gone now. Comes in this nice gift wrap paper. And here's the bottle, the old bottle. Green glass, I think the new bottle's clear glass. The Glenlivet 12-year age. I bought this on purpose. I wanted the older one. So, it has not performed so well. It lost to the uh, this, uh, Family Reserve. It lost to um, to Matten. So now here's the competitor, Glenn Moray, Glenn Moray, Speyside, Elgin Classic. These are both Speyside Scotch. So they're mild, bread, doughy, no smoke, no peat, really. I do plan to get some smoky and peaty ones. That's the kind I like. More than anything. There it is, Glen Moray. They're showing the distillery back in the 1920s, what they think it looked like. Inexpensive relative to other ones. Uh, company founded 1897, 1897. I was just looking at the website and it's an age and average of six years. There's no age statement, but it's age and average of six years. So that can vary, but well, the reason is probably they got some whiskeys in there that's a good deal younger than six. They don't want to call it a three-year age. So they might have some that's old as nine, 10 years, but you got to go with the old, the youngest age. So here's the pretty bottle, Glen Moray. Now the next one up the ladder is the 12 year. And I do plan to buy that. Got a cap cover. Okay, let's get the glasses over here. Mm -hmm. TG, the Glenlivet. No, no foil. Wait, I thought it did have a foil cap cover. Oh. Well, I'll have to search for that. It's somewhere around here. Real cork, not particle board, press board cork. Okay. Put that over there. Oh, box keeps falling. Now we got the Glen Marie. Foil cap cover. Now see, this is that particle board cork. It's like little pieces of cork pressed together. It's not a true hunk of cork, but oh well. It was inexpensive. Like I said, relatively inexpensive moisturize that thing because those things will dry rot as i found out to my dismay when i opened the bottle of uh eight year age wild turkey 101 from 1983 and then had the uh the doggone thing disintegrate into the whiskey not a good occurrence i can see already that the glen Marie is light in the uh, Glen, Glen Livet is a, a lot darker. The Dixie Bass Man says, Good morning, Ron. My money is on the Glen Livet 12 year for the price. 
It's hard to beat. Well, yeah, you would think it would win, but um, but uh, hadn't done well. Where does that cap cover? I bet you it fell down here somewhere. I don't see it. Hmm. Strange. Oh, there it is. Inside the gift wrap. <laughs> I knew it didn't go way too far. <clears throat> All right. Put on the side. Okay, 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 okay. You would hope the Glen Livet would win because it's a good deal more expensive, but like I say, so far it's it's lost, so. Gold, deep gold, and pale straw. Gold, straw. Like straw, you know, in a barn. Um, I, I think color is important. I know scotch sometimes adds caramel color, food color, and blah, blah, Oh, well. That's not my problem. Last night we did the amber lager, amber beer, amber beer, sorry, hangout. And uh, I did the yingling traditional lager which is amber and then uh ronald sutton showed up with chimay bleu blue cap the uh grand reserve a much better product i think great ale was a 10 percent alcohol belgian trappist ale a fabulous product it's worth the well it used to be worth the 4.99 i don't know if it's worth 5.99 about us pushing it a little too much but uh I told him, I said, that's not an amber beer. He said, well, you could say it's amber. I said, well, you could say it's amber, but it's not. And if you go back and watch the video, I, I just said, it's not an amber beer. It's a brun, a brun, a Belgian brun, I mean brown. It's a brown ale in, in that sense of the color, not what, what we would call a brown ale, like Newcastle brown ale. But you understand what I'm saying? It was not amber. I said, there's no way that's amber. And then he said, well, uh, he said, well, last week on uh, Multi Monday, the Massachusetts Beer Reviews, Eric showed up with an ale. It was supposed to be Belgian Strong Golden Ales, like Duvel, like, you know, Duvel, Belgian Strong Golden. He said he showed up with doggone uh, brown beer. I said, I know. That was not a golden ale. It was strong. Trappist Wilkefort 8. But it was clearly not a golden ale. They let him go on. So I say, well, you know, just be consistent, but it's not always so consistent. All right. Uh, amber or red uh, uh, ales. American amber red ales. That was the themes. I watched the playback from last night when they did theirs, and I had had the, the, the Belgian, new Belgian fat tire, which I thought was a Belgian style red amber ale. It's Amer made in America, you know. Eh, it's pretty good. It's kind of dull, but I, I like it more than I used to. I used to say it was just bland. Now I think it's got a little subtle, a good subtle quality to it. And then there was the Bell's. So, somebody presented Bell's Amber, which I've had before when they used to sell Bell's around here. It's pretty much gone from Louisiana. But then the guy presenting that one, he didn't even finish presenting his. It was very, I said, that, that beer... Amber, Bell's Amber has a strange flavor to it, I found. Not as strange as the presentation for that on this video production, however. <laughs> he seemed to be a little done out. And uh, he wasn't able to um, proceed. I said, well, that was different. <laughs> you might say, you had a few of those on your hangouts before where things were a little different. People seem to be a little too exuberant. Yes, I know. 
some were so bad I had to delete the video. I didn't have to delete the video, but I was like, I don't want this on my channel. <laughs> Just <laughs> killed it. Okay, now the main thing we have to take in mind, keep in mind here is they just, these are standard, so they just smell like whiskey. So like if somebody asked you, I never tried whiskey, what does it taste or smell like? These would be two good examples, just a generalized whiskey smell and taste. And that would, they could cross over to Irish, Canadian, or American bourbon or other otherwise whiskeys. You say, no, no, scotch is distinct and so on. Or it could even cross over to Japanese uh, thing. No, but these, the space side type, they're more um, generic, uh, what you say in the aroma and taste. I'm not saying you're going to let somebody try it and they're going to think it's Kentucky bourbon. No, 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 no. But they have a, a more across the board aroma and taste, what I'm trying to say. It would be a good prototype of this is what whiskey smells like. And that smells like uh, alcohol fumes alcohol fumes let's be honest and some bread dough i got a lot of american uh blended whiskeys that smell like that uh, but they don't take you know they're a lot of them the taste to be kind of uh, will, will be highly questionable <laughs> mm, this smells like that also but this one seems to have a bolder aroma, like a more um, developed aroma, a more intense aroma, mm -hmm. which is leading me to believe that it's probably the Glenlivet 12. Lighter in the nose and dark. No, your, your nose isn't going to pick up light and dark. You know what I'm saying? And heavier in the nose. Yeah, that's the right compare. Lighter and heavier. Okay. Taste time now. Yeah. All right, grain, cereal grain. You say, but it's all barley. Barley is a cereal grain, in fact. Um, and bread dough. It's just single malt barley, malted barley, right? No, no uh, wheat, no corn, no unmalted barley. Okay. No bad bite here, no harsh cut cutting finish, no choppiness. It's fine. It's mild. If you want to argue that it's bland, if you want to say, oh, that stuff's so bland, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I wouldn't take issue with that. I wouldn't challenge that. I want people to realize I have no horse in the race when it comes to these challenges. Some people in their mind think that. They think, ah, you're staging these because you have some kind of like affinity for certain brands and you're trying to manipulate it in such a way that you'll make certain brands the winner or not. Well, that's totally untrue. And secondly, I don't have any, any connection to any of these companies, whether it's beer, wine or liquor. And so therefore, I don't really care who wins. Now, is it true that I prefer some beers over others? Well, common sense, yeah. And that would be apropos for wine and liquor as well. But I don't have a favorite. I'm just watching it. I was watching a football game one time, and this lady I used to hang out with, not romantically, uh, she was 12 years older than me. People thought we were, you know, like, oh, yeah, something's going on, because we go to Saints games together and stuff, LSU games and uh, Tulane games. It was just because uh, we like to go to games together and we had common interests in all of that. And she said, um, oh, well, what team are you pulling for? I said, uh, oh, I don't, I don't care who wins. Just I'm, I'm just watching it. And she said, oh, no, I can't watch a game unless I pull for a team. I said, yeah, but what if you don't? I mean, every team I watch, I'm not a, fa a fan of, you know, or, or care about them. But that was her mind and her thinking um, you had to pull for a team. I'm not pulling for either team here. And she used to live right on the or right off the parade route for the crew of uh, Endymion. So every year we go to her house for Endymion, that, that 
Saturday before Mardi Gras. Well, it was hard to find a parking spot. Ooh, we that was hell. But um, I mean, you just walk down the street. There's the parade, you know. So had a lot of fun times over there on Roosevelt Place. That's the name of the street, Roosevelt Place, right off Orleans Avenue. Um, I guess the taste here is bolder, but I'm really not sure about that. I know one thing, it's, I, th I, th I think it's a little smoother. Ooh, I'm, I'm a little confused already. Hmm. There's a little fruit flavor. If you read the descriptions for these scotches, they'll have all that in there. And I always read those descriptions and say, I can't pick up half of that. But there is a fruit flavor like um, peaches. <laughs> peaches. That's strange. They got that little scotch whiskey twang going on. I'm not saying it's peat, no. But there's some kind of little twang that you wouldn't get in American or uh, uh, um, Canadian. You get other kind of twangs with those, oftentimes unpleasant <laughs> twangs. But um, yeah, these are pretty nice. Not great. They're nice. They're nice. They're nice. On their own merits, they scored well. I gave good scores. Uh, thinking on it, drinking on it, doing a solar review. But then you start putting them in the taste challenges and things can get a little rough and rocky and challenging. Then you start to question, oh, maybe I scored it too high. I don't know. I don't know. Let's look at the comments. Dark Lotus, good morning again. Daylight in the swamp. Daylight's coming. I'm, I don't live in a swamp, but I'm not far from it. I know somebody that lives in this town. Like I was at their house one time in the back door. You couldn't walk out the back door because it was a swamp, like right below the house. I was like, why would you want to live <laughs> where literally if you walked out the back door, you'd sink in, in, in water. It was very bizarre. Uh, calling that an amber beer isn't the strangest thing I've ever heard, says Dixie Base Man. Then again, I've heard people call old Rasputin a light beer. Uh, they must have been, you know, like in that movie. What are you, stupid? Are you high? Hi, Ronald Skiaru, says Bill Beerhounds. Hello. I got a twang on my guitar. Bill's been doing a lot of guitar videos. Good morning, Ron. Privet, says Max Walt from the Russian Federation. Peace between the United States and Russia. That's what I say. Checking in, Ron says Jeep and Foodie. Caleb, I have a friend that is into scotch. I got to try Lagavulin. Yeah, that's a good brand. There's so many good Scotch brands. It's just like, you're never going to taste them all. You're never going to be able to buy them all. It's like bourbon. You just try here, try there, and you enjoy what you try, hopefully. My friend David was aggravated with me Sunday because we went to this lecture on a woman who was from Germany, and she was telling us about countries she visited and whatnot. And then he said, him and his friend, she and him, they said, you want to come over and try this new whiskey? I said, no, I, I want to head home. I got to work tomorrow. I got to drive back home from New Orleans. Oh, uh, and the lady said, you're a party pooper. I said, I'm not a party pooper. I just want to go home. I've tried so many whiskeys. I mean, I'm sure it's very nice what they have. I'm not against it. It's just that I would really wasn't interested in driving all the way across the other side of the city to go try a whiskey that I have really no interest in. But once again, I'm not opposed to it. I just have my little protocol. Y'all know, got these lineups and I'm, I'm trying to process through it. I have an interest in Glen Morey and, and uh, the Glen Livid 12 by virtue of the fact that I own them and I'm trying to taste challenge them and tournament them. So I'm gonna get some Kessler and bring back some memories. I saw Kessler Saturday, Sunday, 
what am I saying? Sunday, I saw Kessler and I, I said, oh, there's Beer Hounds. I wonder, Beer Hounds uh, whiskey, he'd have a comment if he was in this store. David always aggravated. He's not aggravated, really. Well, he he's he, he kind of demanding, you know. And if you don't give in, he'll get aggravated. But I don't care because I don't give in to people's demands typically. You say, what about if you're at work and the boss demands something? Well, yeah, I mean, because that's a contract. I pay you money, you do the work. If you don't want to do the work, you leave and we'll hire somebody else at will. Well, that's different. You say, what about people that demand that you get something put in your arm and they squeeze the thing and, and well, I don't give into that. I was thinking about doing something like going to get it and then the person giving it to me, like at the Walmart, giving them a hundred dollar bill, put putting it in their hand and say, make sure it misses. And just give me that card. Get it? But that would be dishonest. You know, it's like I'm carrying around some proof of what didn't happen to get a get away, to get around, to try to get around, bypass all this communism, national socialism. I think they'd do it, you know, because they're not going to get caught. They know I'm not going to report them. And uh, it's a hustle. See? There's ways around these things. I'm not advising you to do that, but uh, hey, you know, David's a Viking. Uh, he's a Teutonic Garlapede. All right. So I was thinking there's so many ways that you could job that system, you know, and you could run around telling everybody, I got my card, I got my card. You didn't say you had your shot, got your card. I got my card. $100. Uh, $100 gratuity to somebody working at Walmart or the pharmacy to, to do a hustle with you. They'll take that gratuity. They'll, they'll, they'll go along with it probably because ain't nobody going to know. So you and them, but it's dishonest. You know, you're like, you, I'm Catholic. You know, you want to be honest. You don't, you don't want to live a lie. It's better to, it's better to be truthful. Be honest and take the hits. You got to stand up to, you really want to stand up to national socialism, not just try to weasel around it. You know, you want to stand up to it, challenge it and destroy it, triumph over it. See, that's the way you do it. That's the way you stop the tyranny, you destroy the tyranny. Mm. Yes, you must be patriotic, not a weasel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not a hustler. Okay, I think I've determined that the, the winner, mm. that's got a creaminess, like cream, you say cream. Dummy, stupid. Everybody knows single malt scotch has no cream in it, dummy. Punk. I know it doesn't. I say it's creamy. And that. Uh, now, I've really tasted these. I've covered everything in these whiskeys. I've checked everything except for the rocker panels. Um, uh, this car's dirty. Um, now which one do I prefer? Oh, let me stop my rhyming and scheming. Well, I really like the first one. It's so mild. It's so doughy. It's so bready. It's so beautiful. It's like, it's like what Tom Cruise said in that 1981 movie. It's beautiful, man. Beautiful. But I don't want to be that fanatical about things like he was, you know, take off that beret. I like when, I like when he does acting, you know, he don't have to play a crazy person. He don't have to act. You know what I mean? When he plays a crazy person, he don't have to act. He just start talking. But anyway, 
and, and that's a game. Well, you say, well, that's a deep subject. It is. Well, let me say this, and I'm unanimous in this. I do think, I do think the do run run, I do think this is a little better, a little bolder, a little more developed, a little older in age, maybe 12 years opposed to average of six. But you're going to pay more, but sometimes you got to pay. Sometimes you got to pay more. If you want to get more, you got to pay more. If you want to get more, you got to pay more. If you want to get more. Yeah, I got my Ram 1500 for cheap. Relatively cheap. Did I get everything I, I could have gotten on it? No. You want to put, you want to get more, you got to pay more. All right. Could have gotten a Laramie. But all the things on it, all the special things. But uh, I didn't want all those things. I had no interest in it. Didn't want it. My friend David was saying, well, you should have got Chrome where this part is here. I said, well, I didn't want that. I didn't care about it. I was indifferent to it. So I got it much cheaper. Is it a great vehicle? Uh, what do you think for 19500 brand new off, off the lot? Brand new now, not some used truck, 2018. But it's fine. It's nice. It's, it wor works well. I drove it to New York City last month. James P. Madonna rode in it. He said he was very comfortable in it. He said, wow, these seats are really comfortable. I said, they are. And I drove all the way from Louisiana. Now, it does. I do like, I wish it had that little pumper in the back where you could pump the back up into your lower back like they had in the Avenger. I had that Avenger pumped out all the way because it would give you some back support in there. So I could bring a pillow, but I liked the Avenger where you could pump out, pump up the volume. Like Lisa Lisa. <laughs> I know they did, I know they didn't make that song. I'm just playing. I'm playing. I was about to say, like with Lisa Lisa and call jam with full force. I'm playing, I, I play too much. I'm like the Grateful Dead. I'm always playing, playing in the band. Uh, uh, daybreak. Hey, look outside, daybreak on the land. And that's the 50th anniversary. Well, I think this is the Glen Livet. I think this is the Glen Livet, 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 the Glen Livet. I sure hope so. I'd be ashamed if I got it wrong. But I'd be more ashamed. But you know, if I if I get this wrong, I'm gonna be even more ashamed for the Glen Levitt, because that'll be a uh it would be this. Destively Bonnaroo. It would be Destively Bonnaroo because it would have a, a straight up losing streak of always losing. Holy smokes, Aunt Jemima, Brer Rabbit. Ooh, woo, I got it wrong. It was the Glen Mori that had a bolder flavor. <laughs> I'm not joking, though. Let's see what they say on the classic website. Light and smooth and fruity. Well, I thought the Glen Liver was light and smooth and fruity. Oh, but I did say fruit. You say you're fruitier than you're fruitier than Monroe on Too Close for Comfort. I'm not fruity. Stop it, y'all. If you if you if you calm down, I won't give you three hot snaps. The Grand Diva snap. Um. Light and smooth and fruity. Our classic is the, per I said peaches and cream. I said peaches is the perfect introduction to the world of single malt Scott whiskey. I can't argue with that. Encapsulating the flavors. See, they use big words. Encapsulating the flavors to which Glenn Murray and indeed Speyside itself is loved for around the world. Approachable and easy drinking. Can't argue with that. Matured entirely in American oak casks, unlike the Glen Liver 12, which is European and American oak. Our classic opens the door to discovering the rest of Glen Moray's whiskeys. Hey, well, I like to go through that door, and I plan to walk through that door, and I want to buy everything on the other side of that door. But I have to find it. I know I can get the 12 year, yeah, but what about the other ones? I want to find them all. I want to make the meat. I'm going to make all the meat. I want to find them. Now, what do they say about the Glen Livet 12? Color, bright and vibrant gold. I said it was darker. Cask, European and American oak, just said that. Flavor, delicately balanced with strong pineapple notes. 
I'll tell you right now, I did not taste any pineapple. I know what pineapple tastes like. You know, I worked with John Kennedy. I knew John Kennedy. Senator, you're no John Kennedy. A long, creamy, smooth fin. Well, I said the Glen Murray was creamy. Not the Glen Livet. No, it was fruity and summery. Summery? You mean like summer? How does something smell like summer? Palate, well-balanced and fruity with strong pineapple notes. No, no, no. Enjoy with seared scallops. Well, I could go along with that. All right. So, well, sorry, Glenn Levy. You just keep losing and losing and losing. Boy, y'all worse than the Cubs. Okay. This year. Yeah. Worse than the Orioles. Let's look at the comments. So I got to, I can't see what up. Oh. Let's look at all these comments and then we out of y'all. Out y'all. Jesus would not approve of bribery and lying. That's right. That's why I said I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bribe. I'm not gonna bribe them to give me a card and I'm not gonna lie about it. I said I could do it and they would take the money. They would they would be like uh Billy Joe and Bobby Sue. They would take the money and run. I'm going to get a fake card for the shot, says Beer Hounds. That sounds like about the easiest thing you could ever want to do. I don't see why that would be difficult to do. Then you could go to Canada and let all those bullies not bully you and show them, say, look what I got. I got a golden ticket. But I'm a, I'm a, I, I would rather destroy tyranny than just try to weasel around it. You can hardly ever try every year from a single Scotch brand. Even Ric Flair's liver would be pushed to the limit by that. I had the same idea. Time to call in a favor. 100 well spent, says Dixie Base Man. Oh, you're going to call in a favor. $100 well spent. It would be worth $100, no doubt. People have no guts these days to do that. Jeep and Foodie said, I'm not a player. I just crush a lot. The Dixie Bass man said, but I have a feeling that lying about that would be a sin to knock me out of getting into purgatory and straight down. Well, you know where. I mean, I don't know if that's a mortal sin, but it, it it's still, you know, you don't want to be like a weasel, you know, be a man. Next time, bring a pistol. I need to grab an Agopago Charlie Holt up, Ranuru. I don't know what that means. He said they do run run they do run run i'll take a brick lens one says beer huh? sound like a uh oh never mind woo early morning drinking no we taste it we don't drink in the morning we doing our tasting just cracked a brewery x the gnar hazy ipa well that sounds good all right i got a flavored uh berliner weiss coming up that's 6.3 percent alcohol i don't think it's a little too high for a berliner weiss but i don't worry about that i didn't make the product aviation the aviation so what's up bro well Tell you what's up. I did a taste challenge between the Glen Livet 12, which is, uh, you know, everybody's favorite mass produced Scotch whiskey aside, this side of Glen Fittich 12. It's like the Budweiser of single malt. No, I mean. And then I went up against Glen Moray, which is sort of like the Miller High Life of single malt Scotch. But I'm afraid to report that the Glen Moray won. Had a better flavor, had a bolder flavor, and it's a lot cheaper, like $10 a bottle cheaper, I think. Hey, well, you say Shivas Brothers, Shivas Brothers, they're going to hire, they're going to hire some people to come after you. Uh, probably, I meant me, haha, I know you will keep it within the lines. Oh, thank you. Uh, he said, nah, mean, nice, nah, mean, nice. Okay, well, let me get out of here. I'll be back later this morning in a late morning taste challenge with the Glen Livet 12 winless in this season. Not a win, not a single win, not a victory. Well, I never would have dreamed that would happen. Whoever would have thought such a thing could occur. Going against uh, the Glen Rothis 1995. Now, I don't think Glen, Glen Livet has got a chance against the Glen Rothis 1995. I was looking at some prices on the internet for that. They got people selling that for like $70, $80. Age from 1995 to 2013, 18 years in Oak. Uh, I wasn't exactly thrilled with it, though. So maybe it will be more of a contest than I thought. He said, nah, I mean, oh, Glenn versus Kessler. Yeah, 
I don't think I'll be doing Scotch versus American blended whiskey, but uh, but uh, 